Welcome to my eighth and final State of the County message as Hartford County Executive. I thought it would be nice to come to you from my alma mater, Haverty Grace Senior High School, which is the site of one of my first accomplishments. Hartford County funded 80% of this $100 million state-of-the-art middle high school. I also wanted to give a special nod to former executive and fellow alumni David Craig for getting the ball rolling. Special thanks to Hannah, Simon, Allison, who are helping us today in the school's TV studio. I'd also like to thank Megan Keller and Brad Spence for helping to coordinate our speech today. I'm proud that the words enter to learn, leave to serve, still stand out front to inspire future generations as they did me. In fact, this podium was a gift from my class of 1980 on our 40th reunion. Thanks to Cindy Mumby, Stephanie Nay, and their staff for our year-end video. This past year has certainly been a run like no other as we continue to navigate the ongoing pandemic. As I grow a little older and prepare to run in the 60 to 69 age bracket in March, I found guidance in the old runner saying, winning has nothing to do with running. Most days don't have races anyway. Winning is about struggle and effort, about optimism and never ever giving up. That same spirit drives me towards the finish line in this coming, my final year of my administration. The past year continues our remarkable turnaround. Despite the pandemic, two blizzards, flash flooding, workplace violence, and the murder of our two deputies during my first year, Pat and Mark. We as a community have been resilient, not only in spirit, but in deeds. The good news is that we have never been in a better fiscal position to run past whatever challenge lies in front of us. When I came into office, the fund balance was drained, our debt levels were up, the water and sewer fund was in distress, there was no plan to meet our stormwater requirements, and investments in both our infrastructure and our people were woefully inadequate. In each and every one of these areas, we are better off today than we were eight years ago. In 2014, our unassigned fund balance was just $8 million. For the year just ended, we closed with $21 million unassigned in addition to $37 million that I've assigned to next year's budget to address my final priorities. It is my intention to keep approximately $20 million in the fund balance and hopefully be in a position to return a portion to our taxpayers, just like we have done with our senior veteran tax credit. When I became county executive, the county's debt had tripled during the 12 years prior to me taking office to $684 million. I am proud to have reversed that trend. And after seven years, we actually lowered the debt. Fortunately, my administration has set all time records for low interest rates that make borrowing as cheap as possible because of our strong fiscal management. This included restoring and stabilizing our water and sewer fund, funding our stormwater requirements, and taking care of our employees. This work has allowed us to provide raises to our public employees each year I have been county executive, reversing a trend of falling behind over the years. Today, after fully funding the school system's budget request and the shares pay plan for the last two years, 
the average starting salary for a teacher is up 22%, and a two-year deputy first class is up 18%, and my own county employees are up 21% since I took office. We are blessed with loyal and skilled law enforcement, teachers, and county employees. Let me add during this surge that our health care workers have held the front line for the last 18 months. We are grateful for their dedication and pray that they get a respite soon. Even though we have created over 7,000 new private sector jobs, while also bringing a billion dollars of capital investment, and my procurement folks have saved approximately $25 million over the duration of my term, I must share a few words of caution. A new challenge has emerged out of all of this, the pandemics, or perhaps an old challenge that only us over 50 years of old uh, remember, and that is inflation. Whether the reason is supply chain issues, increased federal spending, or the Federal Reserve creating all of these new dollars, it seems like prices are going up everywhere. A trip to the gas pump or to the grocery store are weekly reminders of these increases. Now, some of these prices, like lumber, have settled, but others, like the cost of labor, are much likely to stick around and continue to increase. And now, with the highly contagious Omicron variant taking hold, who knows how the economy will play out. Revenue to local governments can change on a dime now, so I will continue to lead us with conservative budgeting, but keep us a leader among all of Maryland's jurisdictions. Most of you know I am proud of all of these financial accomplishments, but the heart of my administration has always been assisting our families and lifting one another up. I often share my favorite scripture, the, ship, uh, the shepherd is happier about the one sheep he has found than the 99 who did not wander off. Together we have helped find many. We turn back the opioid epidemic with education, treatment, and mental health supports. And I have invested over $6 million into our award-winning programs. Thanks to Sheriff Gaylor and his staff, my community services team, and the dozens of nonprofit partners who have helped us daily to heal and to remind folks that recovery is possible. Our programs for youth and families, veterans, civility, and mental health have proven to be national models in many of these areas. I do have a few policy initiatives to complete this year, in addition to leading us out of this latest COVID surge. I am so thankful for our hospital workers, our teachers, nurses, and first responders who are truly on the front lines as Hartford's calls for services continue to climb. Four years ago, I made the difficult decision to form the county's first paid EMS division to supplement our volunteers and foundation. Since that time, county paramedics have responded to over 12,000 calls averaging about 400 calls per month. The EMS system in the county continues to be stressed by the lingering pan pandemic, growing calls for services and staff shortages, which are now prevalent in a number of service sectors. With this in mind, I have signed an executive order today directing our EMS Standards Board to begin the additional transfer of some of regions of the county under our EMS division umbrella. 
This will continue to support our volunteer fire companies while balancing the needs to provide services required in a growing suburban county. I know by working together that we can do both. To supplement the approximately $4 million I have invested in the historic preservation of Hartford County, I will be submitting legislation to duplicate the state's African American Heritage Preservation Program on a local level to provide for fundings for different sites throughout Harford County. From my days as an intern, helping Christine Tolbert with the first Hosanna School Bond Bill, to my efforts to honor Ernest Burke, the Haver de Grace Colored High School, and Sergeant Alfred B. Hilton. I know we need a local program to restore and preserve our rich African-American history for future generations to learn about. In addition, I will also be declaring Juneteenth an official holiday in Hartford County. I will also push to complete internet, internet broadband expansion in all areas of the county for the next generation. So far, I've invested over $12 million towards this mission, and we continue to spread our internet backbone throughout Harford County. Although I have 11 months remaining in my term, I do want to start saying a few thank yous. Of course, as always, I give thanks to God for his guidance and protection. I became a grandfather last year. Debbie and I are enjoying our little brooks every chance we get. During this year, I hope to get around and thank many of you who have touched me and those wonderful organizations that have helped me guide and care for our county. Thank you to my talented cabinet and wonderful county employees who have helped me achieve more than I imagined through running the hills and valleys of the last seven years. I don't think I can say it any better than the first day I was sworn in as county executive. I am still amazed, even today, that a not too tall, middle-class farm boy could work hard and live out his boyhood dreams of public service, to have served on the county council, in the Maryland House of Delegates, the Maryland State Senate, and now as the county executive of the county of my birth. No matter what the future holds, I truly have been blessed with an incredible run, and together, we will finish the coming year, Harford Strong. Stay safe, God bless you, and may God bless Harford County.